I'm gonna let you up in a few. Give me one second, Mama. I'm letting people, um, inviting people on. Can y'all hear me clearly? I want to make sure because my neighbors are playing music. It's booming right now, so I want to make sure that y'all can hear me. Okay, good. All right, y'all. Oh my gosh. We made it to the final episode of Coach Selena's Lounge and Libation. So I am super excited. Um, I didn't think it would get this far. No, I'm lying. I did because I remain true to who I am. So yeah, it's lit. And I'm excited for season two. Um, let's do a mental health check-in on a scale of one to five. One being not great at all, five being excellent. Where do you scale? On a scale of one to five, I want to say I am at a four and a half. Honestly, a three and a half. Okay, a four today. But well, hopefully, you know, during the weekend, it jumps up to five. Um, if you are feeling not your best, please do not hesitate to reach out to me so that I can provide you with some mental health resources um, because we can fight this thing together, you know. So, season 10, today's episode is being the woman that you want to be and being unapologetic about it. The reason why I chose this um, topic is because I feel like it took a lot of growth, a lot of... Happy Friday, Mama! It took a lot of growth, it took a lot of active healing, still healing, to get to this point. And I'm able, I have been able to blossom into my becoming. And even though things may not always be okay, and that's fine, you're human. You know, I'm still doing what the fuck I have to do, you know, to elevate. So I'm going to bring my guest up, Coach K Woods, Mindset Coach. So I'm going to bring her up and we're going to get started. Um... We did a mental health check-in on a scale of 1 to 5. If you're just tuning in, where do you scale? 5 being excellent, 1 being not so great or not great at all. Hey. 
Hey, girl. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Happy Friday. Hey. I love that cup. Good to be back. Let's see. Every, every now and then. <laughs> every now and How then. How you doing? How you doing, baby? I'm actually good. I'm good today. I just, good. you know, I had a little bit of a moment because it seemed a little surreal. I made it to the end, you know, of the first season. Oh. And I'm excited. Like, it's lit, you know? Yeah. So absolutely celebrate i am honored to be here celebrating with you baby you already know like um i really have watched the whole season and your journey along the way outside of that so you know it's an honor to be here with you today sis i'm proud Thank of you, you. super proud Bug tears commence <laughs> <laughs> so you know i was going to do this but i think i'm gonna wait until i am off you know got you know, you know what that is i do <laughs> how are you feeling i'm good today is a good day um it is feeling pretty good today um today has been a productive day any day that i'm productive is always a good day you know not busy but productive um so any day that i claim product you know productive is a great day for me so yeah. Yes. That's that was today for me as well. Very productive. It was a good distraction too. Honestly. Yes. Not in a bad way, but it was a good distraction. All right, so this is how it goes. You know, we're gonna engage in conversation. I got questions for you. And at right. the end I do have a game called Who Said It? Where I give quotes that's related to our topic. You have ten seconds to figure out who said it. So you know, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Oh, okay. it's going to be real fun. <laughs> All right. So hey, we're going to keep... Hey, everybody and everybody. Yeah, I see the people rolling in. Make sure y'all y'all send send the... I'm a little lit already, y'all. Send the episode hey, to you your too, followers. <laughs> send the episode to y'all followers. That is, this is the last episode of this season. So I really want to celebrate in the most immaculate way. You know, I may curse here and there, but I think y'all already know that. So hey, anyway. it is what it is, baby. <laughs> it is what it is. Because right. I'm going to tell so, you right now, I definitely do. So please don't take anything I say personal because I definitely cuss a lot. But um, I'll, try, um, I'll try to refrain. I'll try to refrain. It's okay. Because... See, we are we represent authenticity on this side. <laughs> you better believe it. You better believe it. You know, you know, I am working on it though. It is one of the um growth methods that I am working on to try to reframe because I know I've come a long way from where I was before. So I, I, I'm you know, it's a it's a journey, but I'm with it. All right, we're gonna hear about that journey. So when was the moment? that you realized you wanted to change that you wanted your story to be different walk us through the journey um it's really something that if i have to actually define a moment it was actually april march of 2020 um you know we were just beginning with the pandemic and uh we were uncertain about a lot of things but on top of that i was already dealing with you know, some mental, you know, mental well-being situations that, you know, I wasn't right about, but I was just suppressing it. Um, so that actually began a 30 day break and fast for me. I exited social media. Um, I had to because everybody didn't know. We knew nothing. So it was just a whole bunch of on top of everything else. I had to do that. Right. And I began my 30 days of transformation. Um, that really kind of put me in the direction that I now am today because everything was pretty much created in that month. Um, my business name, Upgraded Mindsets, was created during that 30-day period. Um, I decided I wanted to become a coach in that 30-day period. Um, I knew I wanted to help women within that 30-day period. So April of 2020 was my defining moment. Awesome. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. So 
if you could have a conversation with your 13 year old self, your 16 year old self, and your 20 year old self, what would you tell them? Um, I probably had the same conversation with all three of them mm -hmm. because I was so lost, so lost and just mad and angry. Um, my upbringing, you know, wasn't a bad upbringing, but it was, you know, a dysfunctional one as, as I look back. Um, I wasn't raised with my mom, you know, my grandmother raised me and it was a bunch of me just doing what I wanted to do. So the 13 year old self, I was already, you know, having sex and, you know, doing all that at 16, I was pregnant. Um, and at 20, I still was running the streets as if I had no child. So I lacked complete discipline. So I would have some type of disciplinary plan to advise and uh, to get my life together. Because I was a mess. There's honestly some things that I don't remember um, in those years. Um, and I know that it's just due, of, due to years of suppressing a lot of stuff. So I honestly, things come to me like out the blue now because I live with a mind of clarity. Um, and it's sometimes a little scary, but I'm handling it, you know, um, but I would, I definitely have a hell of a discipline plan in action for all three of them, you know, that's for real. Yeah. That's beautiful. So where are you when it comes to the, the act of healing? Because I think as coaches, we still have to do that ourselves to be able mm. to help others. So where are you on the act of healing? Um, I am actually, I'm healing. Um, and I'll, I'll honestly say I'll probably always be healing. Exactly. I, I, I don't think I'll ever be healed. And I'm okay with that. Um, you know, just knowing that I am intentional in my journey, you know, just knowing that I am capable of continuing my journey. That's that's enough for me. Um, I look at things totally different in life now. Um, I changed how I think, what I think about, um, and it really changed my life, like for real. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Congratulations to growth. Thank you, baby. <laughs> so, what makes a woman empowered? Um, what makes a woman empowered, in my opinion, is her boldness, her sense of confidence, inner confidence, yeah. and the mindset of unapologetic in anything and everything that she's doing, um, inspiring herself and others, and just having that a part of who she is as a person. Um, that, that's just the overall like perfect definition to me. I feel like for a long time we were never it was never okay as women especially black women to be vulnerable right we were always the strong black woman strong black woman and I don't mind being the strong black woman but I also don't mind being vulnerable at the same time you know, because if you cut me, I bleed and I'm hurt. I will cry. Now mm -hmm. I probably I can't say that because I don't want them to block this episode. But, <laughs> but you know, so when did you realize that it was okay as a woman to be vulnerable? Um, probably. Mm, I probably will say maybe. <laughs> end of 2020 um mm -hmm. i was embracing more of my feminine side um because i led a life of hardcore you know i was a street girl hey i was fighting all the time i've been stabbed seven <laughs> times you know what i'm saying like yeah. i led that life so it was always about being hard for me you know my father was never in my life um you know and i i just felt like i always had to be hardcore i couldn't be soft um, you know, um, but probably 2020 was a year of complete transformation of my emotions. And I tell people all the time, I've experienced more emotions in the past two years than I ever have in my entire life because I'm allowing myself to feel my emotions. You know, I don't 
suppress them anymore. You know, I don't say, oh, I'm good. I'm good when I'm not good. When I'm not good, baby, I'm telling you, I'm not good. And I don't care how you receive it because it's not for me to make you feel some kind of way. It's for me to tell you how I feel and get it off me. You know what I'm saying? I, right. I, I don't care. You know, that's a part of my unapologetic mindset. I, I'm saying that in a nice way that I don't care. You know, um, well, you but, say, I don't give a fuck about how you feel. Like, you. like I don't, and well, they know how I talk it. anyway, so <laughs> that's how they take it because they know how I talk. You know, <laughs> um, but <laughs> I had to really like start embracing more of the feminine side of things. Um, I always was. I'm a gym shoe girl. I'm a gym shoe head. Jeans and gym shoes. I love it. Um, but now you know I, I wear weave y'all let me tell y'all this story because <laughs> I I would never wear weave y'all can see I have like my hair cut on both sides but like I used to rock little curls like this and I would always be like I don't want no hair I'm gonna be teen short hair forever you know woo, woo, woo. but that was a part of my restricted thinking you yeah. know once I really started embracing more of the feminine side of me and understanding that side because I had it in me I always wanted to be that person right. but I wasn't able to because of the people I was with you know and the lifestyle I was living I had to be hard so um, but I started wearing weave y'all I started putting sewings in and stuff like that like I love doing that you know now this stuff is convenient but yeah y'all see that new growth but hey, ain't no shame in my game but uh <laughs> Nah, but this is convenient, <laughs> but it also gives me a sense of feminine too because you know I, I feel like I be a little sexy sometimes. I y'all know how y'all take y'all pictures by yourself and you know stuff like that. I do that. I, I embrace that about myself. You know, just loving who I am. Um, you know, so I think that you know, 2020, 2020 was my year of transformation just as a whole. Yeah, I have to say, I know I've said this to you before, but. I remember a time where I had to talk you into taking pictures <laughs> because you would never take a selfie. So to see that every few minutes, oh, there's a video, there's a story, I'm like, yes. Now, this is what you I used to be about. terrified of the social media. I was what they called a lurker. Like, I would be on social media and just scroll like and keep it moving. Like, I wouldn't post videos. I might post a selfie here and there. Um, sure. But... Now, honestly, I'll tell y'all a secret about that, though. I did used to take selfies of me all the time. I just wouldn't post them. You yes, know, sir. I would take <laughs> I would take pictures and I just wouldn't post them. I'd have 50 mm -hmm. pictures of something, you know, selfies of me, but I just would never post them. You know, if I had a hairstyle, I thought it was super cute. Yeah. Yeah. And now you can't stop me, baby. No, not one bit. And that's good because that means you're unapologetic about your shit. Oh, baby, you can't <laughs> tell me nothing. Hey, I know I got flaws and I embrace all of them, everything about me, because that's what I feel true confidence is. You know, it's not about how you, you know, how you dress. It's how you carry yourself as a whole, as an individual, how your character stands out. Like, you know, that's what I look at in someone's confidence. You know, like, um, I, I know I think differently than a lot of people and, and i'm good with that you know so <laughs> you're supposed to it's boring trying to trying to be like everybody else that yeah that's funny as hell mm -hmm. i think for me the moment i realized it was okay to be vulnerable because i always hated crying honestly like even when i started sisters in courage it was still mm -hmm. there was still a fight to be vulnerable like if i was crying i would cry because i was crying like <laughs> i couldn't do it but then I realized, I'm like, I can't sit here and encourage others to acknowledge your feelings, accept your feelings, do it, you know, blah, blah, blah you know, all of that. I couldn't yeah. tell them to do that. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here angry because I'm having feelings. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, this is not the way to go. And then fast forward to the pandemic, I had, I was regressing a little bit, you know, mentally. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wasn't okay, so I wanted to reach out to somebody because I didn't want to sit here and all this work that I put into becoming, you know, who I was then in 2020, right. I didn't want it to go to waste. I didn't want it to be in vain. So I wanted to not have to always talk to the Lord. I love God. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I do. But I want to speak to someone else. 
who yeah. can help me understand, you know, why I feel the way that I feel or to, right. you know, just tap into that, that vulnerability. So and it's been a beautiful feeling ever since. It I is. Um, yeah, that part, you know, um, and I've embraced, you know, all of my feminine, like, you know, my man's be the difference, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I'm a completely different person. And, you know, I really embrace that side of me, you know, more than anything. And must be like, I've been seeing you in your stories. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> you know, I, I, I see you do. You know, um, and like I say, just that level of inner confidence, you know, is what I'm trying to instill in others as well. You know, yeah. because we can be that way. It's never too late for us. You know, and it goes back to what you said earlier. You know, we've been programmed to suppress our emotions, you know, and not be vulnerable. So right. I want to, you know, teach us how to be vulnerable, but also be unapologetic and still stand on what you stand on within your beliefs. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's possible. I'm living it. Period. Period. When was the moment where you realized, like, damn, I'm it. I am that fucking girl. Like, when was that moment for you? Mm -hmm. If I can say recently, because I probably think it a lot now, but I had a birthday and business anniversary event for myself. And I kind of wore something that was a little outside of what I normally wear. Because like I say, I'm usually a gym and gym shoe girl or sundress and legging girl. Hey, I'm rainbow all day, baby. But um, <laughs> I kind of stepped out the box with what I wore. And that day when I put it on, it was really a defining moment at that time. You know, I've had a lot of defining moments along the way, but that one just solidified everything that I'm doing. You know, everything that I'm standing for, you know, everything that I believe, it, it really just was a, you know, a defining moment. Okay. So my next question is, sorry, uh, name two awakening moments. Two awakening moments. Hmm. Oh, ooh, you let me narrow it down to two because I probably have a lot. Between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., I have a lot of awakening moments, let me just say. <laughs> um, I think I had an awakening moment probably in July when I decided that I wanted to branch out into group coaching. Um, you know, I do mentor and I do speak you know, publicly speaking, things like that. But it's really time to, like, have a community of regular interaction to on a group level. Um, right. So, you know, September I'll be launching, you know, group coaching options, and then I'll be having, like, monthly mentor sessions um, here at my office. So um, I think that was a defining moment because – that's really what it's about for me. Women in community who don't know each other but are still able to embrace, be vulnerable with each other, not be judged, you know, right. and just really live in their truth, you know, live their truth, speak their truth, build their truth. Um, and that group coaching, I think, is the next level for that, you know, for me. Um, another defining moment is something that you inspired in a way, and that is coming out with my book. Um, I have decided to put my 30 day journal from April of 2020 into text. So I am launching the 30 days of transformation from Keisha to coach. Um, and that title might tentatively change, but that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. But, um, I'm definitely looking to get that done um, because I feel like it's going to help because not only is it speaking on my personal journey, but it's also giving insight and resources on what I was doing within my journey in them 30 days, you know, so I feel like it's going to be very beneficial to those that, you know, are going through similar things and are ready to break free and get out of the negative thinking and stuff like that, so. I think that's dope as fuck. I'm looking forward to seeing it plastered everywhere. You Thank know? you, so. Thank Thank you, so. Hey, Thank you. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> um, I want to say for me, I realize even though I don't have a problem with being vulnerable, I have to mm -hmm. be mindful of who I'm vulnerable with. Um, because several weeks ago, um, 
you know, I've been praying for the spirit of discernment and the pieces yeah. have been coming together. And so I realized that um, the person I was confiding in um, took my vulnerability as if I lacked confidence. Mm. No, <laughs> I don't. I'm human. I'm going to go through shit. But right. um, I, I don't. When I realized it, I was like, that's crazy. Because to me, it's like we're supposed to be in this together. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think the the icing on the cake for me was I don't mind when, you know, I inspire others or I don't mind encouraging anybody. I like I don't mind, you know, any of that. I just feel like, you know, give credit where credit is due. That part. Because, you know, I actually had to delete and block this person because I noticed that a lot of my lingo was being used. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of ideas like when you know how you and I speak, you yeah. know, always, you know. So a lot of my ideas were being, you know, used and I was like, wait a minute. Right. Maybe I'm bugging, but I wasn't. And usually I'll have my loved ones, they'll they'll check them like swing you over the top. But I wasn't. So I have right. to learn to be mindful who I'm vulnerable with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another awakening that I had this week, uh, I can't even remember it, <laughs> but it was really powerful. It was a dream that I had, and it scared me because, you know, when I think of upper room, I automatically think of, you know, heaven, dying and stuff. Yeah. But in the dream, um, I was faced with obstacles, and in the dream, there were some of my students in there that kind of was like a guide for me. But in short, because I'm rambling, in short, it was just to let me know that I'm in the right place at the right time, doing what I'm supposed to do. Right. And whoever's in my circle is supposed to be there. And whoever is not, they will immediately drop. Because right. that's what happened in the dream. I People live stop. by that every day. So. Every day. Um, that is something that I want and you know people can call it me people can do it or whatever but like I tell people all the time everybody's mental well-being is being tested right now you know um, your mental well-being is not more important than my mental well-being and if I got to step back to get my mental well-being together baby I'm unapologetic about that if you feel some kind of way about it then that means you don't feel some kind of way you feel some kind of way about me and I need to reevaluate anyway because again we are in living in different times right now. Everybody has to, you know, make sure that they're together. Because who's going to look out for us if we don't? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, that's that's so important. Like, I don't have a problem. Like, you serve, you know, the way I look at it is you serve the purpose that you served. Now it's Everybody got the season. That's a realization mm -hmm. that I had to come to terms with. You know, e everybody has a season. That um, you know, I, I I am you know unapologetic on who I walk away from to protect me, to That's protect right. my mental well being, to protect my peace. Hey, whoever is on this live right now, I want you to please just understand that you are your priority. Period. Don't put your prior. Don't put your life in nobody else's hand. You control that. I don't care who it is, family, friends, anybody. Nobody should be above you when it comes to how life is being lived. You know, I just want us, you know, to be mindful of that. And I know it's a, you know, it, it's a struggle because we are programmed to do that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're programmed to be like that. We're programmed to say, no, I got to make sure that they're good, you know, and then I'll be good. We base their happiness on our happiness. You know what I'm saying? We base our happiness on theirs, I meant to say. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can't do that anymore. You know, yeah. I'll talk to women when I'm having, you know, consults and I'm like, you know, well, how you feeling? No, you know, as long as my kid's okay, you know, I'm Okay. You can't, even though we love our kids, we love our kids, but you cannot put your happiness in the hands of your children. Anybody. That's facts. Yeah. yeah. Um, to add to that, like, I don't, 
Yeah, I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> I just don't give a fuck. Because the way that I see it, if you take my my progression as a threat in any way, um, in any shape, be it professional, mentally, whatever it is, that if part. you take it as a threat in any way, imagine what happens once I reach where I am going. I really don't give a fuck. You gonna be sick to your stomach, <laughs> right? Because please don't get it twisted. I live by that creed. You know, <laughs> if anybody fought on here follows me, they know that I live a very unapologetic lifestyle. My words are unapologetic. My quotes are unapologetic. Everything is unapologetic. It, it gotta be. That's the only way that we're gonna be stress free, y'all. Life yeah. happens, but we don't have to be stressed about it. No, we don't. Go through what you need to go through, feel what you need to feel, and then you bounce back and do what the fuck you gotta do. Yeah. I know it's really, I know it sounds like easier said than done. And yeah. sometimes it's not because I just want y'all to know that healing is not pretty. Mm -hmm. I know like you see on social media, people will only show like the, the meditation and the you know, the flowers and all that's great. That's a part of it. However, they don't also show the parts where you're crying and you're stressed and you're like, God, hey, God what you the ready fuck? to throw something you against the fuck? wall? You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, right. you ready to throw that glass? Because <laughs> tell <me> y'all. <laughs> so, and then it's the moments where, like, you will have your strategies in place even when you mm -hmm. are healing. But sometimes those strategies may not work in that moment. So then yeah. you gotta be like, ooh, I need to figure this out because I'm about to go DMX. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. I'm going to go straight you know um, the one of the things that I actually go to now for that is like I go to the mindfulness meditation like instantly um, I have trained myself to if I'm getting to that point hey, I'm going a, I'm to a shut it down you know with that with the thoughts of the right now you know being mindful of my surroundings at this particular moment being mindful of where I am what I've accomplished you know I automatically get that positive reinforcement. Now, I'm human, y'all. I'm human. Because it be days where I'll cuss, I will still cuss somebody out. You know, <laughs> that's a part of being unapologetic. I will still cuss your ass out, okay? I don't know if we can cuss on here, but I will still cuss you out. Yes. Okay? You, did you not just hear me say fuck motherfucking shit at like, Yeah, I, was, I forgot. Yeah, we already talked about that at the beginning, girl. That's that, that's that yeah. Mary Jane. That's that Mary Jane, you know. That short Coach time, Thomas I told you. Ready to woosa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love her. Yes, I Wrong. do too. That's my baby. That's my girl. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, it's it's we have to stay, you know, just mindful and stop letting ourselves um give other people control of our lives. I that love you, that baby. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. Yeah. So. What makes you unapologetic? Um, just my overall being. You know, the fact that I wake up and everything that I think about, I allow the logic to make the decisions and not my emotions. Um, you know, do I have emotions about situations? Yes. But I find that a lot of us make emotional-based decisions and we regret them 30 minutes later. So I don't, I, I try not to do that, you know, um, and having that mindset every morning and setting the attention that I'm going to make sure that I react with my logic instead of my emotion, um, puts me in a place of saying, I just don't care who get mad about it. Exactly. Because people want you to, you know, be, be caring of their feelings, but you're not thinking about my feelings though. Why am I not supposed to be hurt? Because you hurt, so your hurt supposed to trump my hurt. Oh, okay, that's what we're doing. No, we're not doing that. At you know, all. and I literally, you know, hey, everybody know I love a good debate. I love to have healthy conversation, and I can still love you at the end of the conversation. I don't care if we done went back and forth for an hour. You know, I'm just that talkative person, but I'm not going to sit up here and just dump my feelings down because you and yours. No, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna be able to do it. I ain't gonna be able to do it. You know, so that's just a part of you know my my character just overall. You know, I've always had a confident character. Um, you know, but I had a few insecurities. You know, but now I have none. You know, I 
I just don't have any. You know, the, the worst thing I think about is the fact of probably uh, <laughs> where I, where I'm moving, my relocation. Well, we already you know. That. Yeah, you know. So get yeah. on it. <laughs> that part. Yeah. Get on it. Exactly, yeah. Coach. You said frustrated is a feeling that shouldn't be denied. It festers. Well, exactly. It definitely yes. Does. I embrace every emotion. Every emotion. I feel them. I will do not disturb. I will do whatever I got to do to Girl, handle and get myself my, back together. My phone As a full time entrepreneur, they feel like I'm supposed to be online all day. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. No. Hey, I'm not. My phone stay on do not disturb. Mm -hmm. you know I, mean? I will shut everything down. The blog, like the podcast, down. everything. <laughs> I'll shut everything down. <laughs> yeah, that's all go away. And it's um, also important to place your energy where it matters. That part. Yeah. yeah, because not everything not everything requires your energy and not everything should have any kind of power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hold yeah. on. I was talking to someone the other day and I guess she was overwhelmed with what was going on in her life and she basically told me, wait till I'm an adult. What does that mean? Was she first? Was she saying it out of a sense of frustration? Do you think? Yeah. Uh, I, I can see. Yeah, I can see that she would say something like that out of frustration, maybe. Yeah, because the person who just comments that is a whole ass adult. She's older than me. Right. <laughs> she's older than me. So the fact that she's uh -huh. a Nah, it's okay. Let it roll off your shoulder. Not everything yeah. deserves it doesn't deserve no kind of focus or concentration. No, you okay. know, that we have to we have to definitely switch the, you know, the negative energy. Um, and that's you know, that's also a part of being unapologetic is not being afraid to hurt somebody else's feelings. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I see. And see that that I don't that's like manip manipulation type in a sense, you know. The um, you, you're still able to make you know grown decisions and do what you do, you know. Um, hey, living with your parents is not a thing. My son is 28 and he still lives with me. I mean, we live as roommates, quote unquote. Right. But you yeah, know, I'm I don't have. <laughs> so I'm a whole grown ass adult. I do a grown mm -hmm. uh, adult things, you know. Yeah. Keeping it clean. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Adult. But you know what, Chrissy P, don't let it get to you, baby. You know, mm -hmm. I know that you have goals and you have, you know, dreams of, you know, doing things differently and, you know, maybe moving out at some point. So, you know, you keep those positive thoughts, you know, going. Um yeah, I'm sure she did probably mean life was yeah. hard, you know, but um, hey, I, uh, can I tell y'all a moment of vulnerability real quick? Um, when I began my journey of transformation, I sent a group chat to my family and I told them that I had to back away from everybody right now because if I didn't, I was going to go to prison. It's so crazy because after my event, I had a similar conversation with my cousin. So we, we are all in a group chat. Um, and I don't, I don't care. Like, yeah. I, I love you, right? But I just, I know that you, I cannot depend on you for in, important things. You know what I'm saying? So I'll just love you from a distance. Yeah. You know? And I had to do that. I had to do that for me because I was yeah. always the person that was doing for everybody. You know, I was always when everybody called. I was running here, doing this, making sure everybody was good here, 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 here. And I couldn't take that time out for me. You know, so eventually it started coming out at the seams, you know, with everything else, you know, so that's why, you know, it was just like, no, you know, it, it was time. And I had to set those boundaries. It was hella boundaries. And I'm not going to say it wasn't friction in the boundaries. But now I have pretty much healthy relationships with my family because of the boundaries that I set. Y'all, it's going to be hard. It's going to be rough. It's it going to be is, tough. For sure. But. It's necessary. The journey is so necessary, y'all. So necessary. With a friend, and we no longer friends at all. That's fine. It was her Period. Season, her season was up. That's all. I can I relate, mean. Chrissy. Trust me. I can relate, baby. Her season, <laughs> her season was up. It is okay. You know. Yep. Um, yep. Going through the comments, drain your energy to play in your face. It pisses you. It does. It definitely does. But. Um, as I said earlier, I don't give a fuck because I'm I'm in a different space mm -hmm. in my life. I've built too much yeah. 
you know, within myself, mentally, I, I've built too much for, to let anybody yeah. to fuck that up for me or to yeah. allow anybody to steal my joy in any kind of way. Yeah. The way I see it is I don't play about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't play yeah. about me. So the minute I feel that you cross any kind of boundaries, it's kind of clipped for me after that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no coming back because you knew that I had the boundaries. You know, it was it, a conversation was had and you still took it upon yourself to fuck with me. No, right. I'm good. you can keep yeah. it. But you know what? Even when things make you mad, you, you take them as lessons, right? Um, you take them as a lesson because the next time they try to pull the same thing, you know how to react differently. And that's going to not only throw them off, but it's going to empower you because you reacted differently. You're, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be like, man, I don't even care about that. And they're going to be like, oh my gosh, she don't care. Now I can't, you know, what am I going to do now? You know, they don't, you know, I'm not doing nothing to get to her no more. You know, um, that's the true power of us yeah. just being completely unbothered you know um but again it is a reprocessing and reconditioning journey yeah. you know but if you stay intentional with it baby you can live your best life not worrying about nobody, nobody but, you. but yourself absolutely all right so moving on to the next question and the final question what will keisha's not coach k what will keisha's legacy be Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I think I skipped the question. I did. Oh, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. That would be the, the next, the, the question I skipped would be the last. So, okay. What would be um, your legacy? I think my legacy would just be being um, an unapologetic, trend setting confident being just overall um just really a person that really has spoke her truth walked in her truth and overcome what was you know said to destroy her you know what i'm saying so i think that that would be keisha's legacy because keisha's overcome a lot and i'm damn proud of what i have overcome in life you know so Definitely. Definitely. Being a woman making an impact. That's crazy because that was the last episode I did. <laughs> that mm, was episode. Being a woman nice. making an impact. Is there anyone that inspired you throughout your journey? Um, well, I'm about to say you. Um, you have definitely been an inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, um, you know, they say that you can't meet genuine women through the internet, but I'm gonna tell y'all something like I have the most bomb online support system ever. I have literally built bonds with some dope ass women online that I have never met in person. Actually, some I have met in person, you know, but just knowing that you know, I, I have so many just those that are giving me positive reinforcement. Um, my Motivate group that I we, we meet with on weekly, um, we've been meeting for over a year now. And when I tell you they are such a breath of encouragement because we're able to be ourselves. We're able to talk about the business side of things. We're able to talk about the personal side of things. Um, you know, a shout out to Motivate because they are definitely, they have definitely been um, my UPM partners, um, Mui Bucci and um, Mui and my cousin Passy like we are all business business partners and we just you know click together um you know we have went into partnership you know we have had no ill things um you know my family once we were able to get over and get the boundaries established you know they have been you know a great support so i just really have a dope support team um and i'm super grateful for all of y'all for real you love girl anytime. Thanks, <laughs> anytime. <laughs> no, but on a serious note, it is important to have intentional beings in your circle. Absolutely. And intentional about their growth, intentional about where it is they're trying to go, intentional about your growth. And it cannot be any kind of competition. Like that, I think that was one of the parts of when I started Sisters in Courage that I love because I love being in the room with other women and we 
this mad love. Like, you know, I've definitely had a few. You know, <laughs> I definitely had a few. That part, that but, part. You know, they definitely served their purpose, looking back in hindsight, you know, despite the other stuff. But it is definitely important to have people who are intentional in, in your space. And, you know, they're rooting for you and you're rooting for them. So with that, yeah. I'll empowered women empower women. Hey. Period. Period. Yeah. And I, I actually have that um in my office. Like, if y'all look, that says when women support each other, incredible things happen. Empowered women empower women. Like, Period. when you walk into my office, that's the first thing you see. You know, I want women to be reassured and, you know, let them know that this is a safe space here. It's a safe so, space. And I'm a safe space. I, okay. So, one more question because it just came into my head. Come on, when did you realize? When did you realize like um, that sisterhood was a thing? Like when you fell in love with it? Like what was that moment for you? Um, I honestly have always been in love with it. Um, I've always loved to be around other women and just vibing out. You know, um, a Facebook memory came up from an actual girls' night I hosted at my house back in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, I literally brought, you know, some together that didn't even know each other. And baby, when I tell you, we kicked it like we have been all sisters for years. That was the best night. And we were just at my house, you know, drinking, dancing, having a great time and just great dope vibes, you know, and that I've always just had it in me, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and I was actually labeled the bone collector at work. So I would always listen to other women and t they'll tell their story to me, you know, and I'd offer, you know, a little insight and, you know, but they knew I would never right. tell anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like they knew that their secrets were safe with me. And to this day, they're still safe with me. You know, even those that I don't chat with anymore, or talk to anymore, they know that I still won't, you know, I'm just not that person. Um, you know, so it's always sisterhood has really always been a thing for me, but to be on the level that I am now and to keep elevating it, you know, it's, it's definitely, it's a must. It gets must. better. Than, you know, it's like fine wine, you know, yes. it gets yes. better over time. So, and I really love that. Like, I feel like, I don't know. I just love being around people who I can learn from. Yeah. I love that. Um, I think for me, it started, it started in high school. Um, when I started high school, my school was new. And so I was the second graduating class. And so the girls that were older than me, we, they had a peer mediation group. And at that time, I was like, you know, high school, you're becoming, you're trying to become or figure out who you are, who, what group you belong to, you know? So I definitely fit the stereotype for sure. And so, you know, I was in that moment where, like, you know, how I was raised, you know, is to always be a solid friend, even mm -hmm. as a young kid. Yeah. So I always want to say I was more mature at my age than, you know, than most. Okay. So I understood the value of friendships, but for some reason, for others, it wasn't quick because they were so busy about, Mm -hmm. You know, the A-list the A people in school. Anyway, when I started interacting with the older girls in the school, and I was nervous because you know, they're older. So, but but I felt like we had a lot of things in common. And to this day, I'm very close with a lot of them. You know, like when I was in the hospital um, in 2017, one actually came to help me maneuver, so make sure I had to go to the bathroom and help yeah. clean me up and stuff like that. And yeah, I was like, she's that's dope. Like, I already that's know dope. That's my dope. Child, who my child's godparent will be. <laughs> you know? Right. So, that's <laughs> sorry, it's the teleport plus whatever else is in the cup. Um, <laughs> yeah, so for me... Um, like you said, 
as you continue to elevate, it becomes more and more special, you know, especially when everybody is trying to make it, trying to, you know, stand out, do what they need to do, trying to grow. And I love that shit. Like, I, I like seeing it. Like, the people in my circle grow. I love that. And I'm like, that motivates me. Like, mm -hmm. I'm teleport. Right? I just say <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> it's going to be even worse when I get off. I already showed what it hey. was. I ain't gonna say we got liquor at the all in here in the thing. I just didn't get none because I had to, I was still actually working. I had just got off of Zoom like twenty minutes before I got on. So I'm like, no, no, no I'm gonna chill tonight. I'm gonna chill tonight. So not me. <laughs> not me. Oh no, don't get it twisted. Nah, I'm gonna see it. Give me that gym, but uh, I'm good on the liquor tonight. <laughs> you started already. You know I am. <laughs> you know these eyes don't lie. These eyes don't lie, baby. <laughs> oh, she said I can't drink. Oh, I'll drink for you, boo. I'll drink for you. All right. Okay. That's my um uh, my boyfriend's sister. Oh, okay. Hey, I'll boo. I got I got a Long Island iced tea and Bacardi somewhere in here. So what is the teleport? What is that? Okay, girl. So teleport is it's a wine, but it's also a cognac. Oh. So when you for the first time I had it, okay, the first time I had it, I was hot, like I started sweating, and I could not stop giggling, and I was like, "This is gonna be my drink forever," and that was over five years ago. Okay, what you say? I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, you know, I'm gonna just show it because I'm not getting paid to promote them. So you're right. Um, Mm -mm. But that's that's oh. the drink. It is, it's really good. Oh, okay, I'm going with the mess up leg from an accident. I need that. I got you. I'll drink for you. <laughs> okay. Now I was when I came to Harlem a couple years ago. Um, they actually gave I was I drank something called a Nutcracker. Girl, I know about those. <laughs> I was I, like, I, I really don't remember what was in it, but it was good as hell. Rum. It's Ooh. rum. And I am not even a rum person. It's rum. See, when I, live, I live in a predominantly Caribbean neighborhood. Okay. So they, they have those. Ooh. Yeah, folks, no, stay ready. She already knows. Yeah. <laughs> you know she knows. <laughs> She already knows. So. Hey, hey, I'm gonna have to try that next time I come to the East Coast, baby. My na my neighbors, they always having some kind of party, some something, and so I had um, the coquito too. Now that I see it in the chat, right? but yeah, it's I had that too. All time, it's about that season. It's about that time, Lord Jesus. It's about that time. Yes. Ooh. Mm hmm. Mmm, some luscious on here. Oh, period. It's okay. <laughs> Give me some good old Casamigos, and I'm good to go. So you know what I did one time? My cousin had a birthday party, and I had some honey, which I love, Ooh. and some Casamigos, a little sprinkle Ooh. together, and. Yeah. yeah, my body can't handle mixing liquors no more. I is either one or the other. I can't. No, I, I can't. I can't, I can't do it, mm -mm, baby. But I can't even drink Hennessy like that no more. Now I can drink Remy, um, but I can't. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I love me some. I love me a little bit of everything, honestly. Tito's is my jam, but just had Casanova's for the first time. It was so smooth. I gotta try that. I've heard about Casanova's before. I like Tito's sometimes. Yeah, I'm not a vodka. Oh, oh yeah, Casamigos. That's my. See, I'm talking about Casanova. Hey, all the Casamigos, the Esperanza, all that. I'm confusing me, please, because <laughs> I'm hey, trying I'm to be with it. Because I'm always. Turned in my episodes. I would be turned. Mm -hmm. 
That's all right. We be turned together, man. I just, like I said, didn't get a chance to fix me one because it's definitely liquor here in the office. We definitely have liquor here in the fridge. Man. Mm. Look, y'all finna have me come to the East Coast just so I can try all these. Y'all say it's for the fall, right? Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to come and yeah. get For real, for real. Yes. Yes. That turned down for what? Not a damn thing. <laughs> Not a damn thing. <laughs> Not a damn thing. No, Mike's ma'am. hard if I can drink. Ooh, yeah, I can't fool with them, baby. Mike's heart is okay. Yeah, you know, that's, that's water for me. <laughs> yeah. I'll drink them seagulls cooler if I'm trying to just be a little cute or something, but cause that's my water to me, too. But uh, I'll drink something. So, Ooh. in here, that bottle just looks like this- bad behavior. So it's not just Long Island iced tea. It's actually rum in here too. And it's been sitting since I don't remember. June. I want to say June. It's been sitting. So uh, that's what's added to the other stuff. All right, then, sis. Look. <laughs> I don't got no hair, but it's a situation tonight. It is. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me keep a PG. <laughs> hey, no, no, it's all good. What well, we say, we authentic on this one, baby. Period. Mm-mm. Haitian rum. Oof. Look, y'all give me. I'm t- I'm coming to the East Coast, so I'm giving some now. Some somebody said, looks like take me to the king or get pregnant. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm. If I had to choose, I'm not ready to see the king yet. So. <laughs> I'm not ready to see the king right mm-hmm. now. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not oh ready. my god! You no, know, I still want to be 80. You know, I think I've said this before, but I want to be 80 popping my cat. Like I do, I really do. Like, I still hey. want to, I still but want you to know what? Me. We have that capability because we are, you know, making the changes to live a healthier life. You know, because it's not just about you know, eating lifestyle, it's about our mental lifestyle as well. Mm-hmm. You know, you can exercise five times a day and eat the greatest foods, but if your mental still ain't together, baby, it's still going to be a struggle yep. for you. They will coincide with one another. So yep. that's Man. I'm, I'm gonna, my mom's starting to go places. So we're going to start this game. We're going to start this game. Right, because I'm trying like, where you go? Where you go? Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> so the game is called Who Said It? I give you a quote that's pertaining to our topic. You got 10. Go away. Sorry. You got 10. <laughs> you got 10 seconds to guess. You know, you ready? I'm ready. All right. So the first quote is I like being a woman, even in a man's world. After all, men can't wear dresses, but we can wear the pants. Was it A, Tina Turner, B, Angela Bassett, C, Whitney Houston, D, Loretta Devine? Mm, that, I'd probably say Angela Bassett. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. And you're wrong. You see, Whitney oh. Houston. <laughs> I would have never thought she said nothing like that. <laughs> right? Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey. Rest in peace with you. Better go keep on, resting, baby. It's got to go on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cancel culture. They be out there. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> all right, the next one. This is short. Authentic is always better. Was it A, Melinda Gates, B, Jennifer Lewis, C, Issa Rae, or D, Marilyn Monroe? Uh, I'll say D, Marilyn Monroe. Is that your final answer? Yep. You're wrong. It was B, oh, Jennifer God. Lewis. <laughs> hey, I'm used to hearing her say, like, come up out that shit. Yeah, that's what I'm used to hearing from her. I love her. That's, that's, I my, that's my girl. I love her. That, she, I don't want no back. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Fucking with me. Period. These streets. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love her. That was it. That was the last question. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's only two. It's only oh, two. Okay, because I'm so like, girl, I probably got them all wrong. And I probably done said them a couple times. 
Hey, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I would say for you to take a shot before we go, so I'm gonna have to take a shot for you. So thank you, I appreciate you. Go ahead. Period. I love that cup, though. I love that cup. My brother got it for me. I love when it. You to Atlantic City, because I like to be bad a little bit. Hey, so who don't? I don't know, but they worry if they don't. Let me stop. Somebody said three. Three what? Three shots? Ooh. Oh. Yeah, you're supposed to take one for her too, right? Remember, you're supposed to take one for her, so go ahead. Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Shay. Reminder, baby. That's right. Reminder. <laughs> I got you, boo. Look, I took a shot of water for you, baby. There you go. I got you. I took the shot. There it is. I got you, girl. Hey, let me just say, this has been so much fun. So much fun. So much fun. Sorry, I'm bugging out. <laughs> yeah, it has been. I'm definitely excited because I made it. I made it to the last episode. Yes. Sir. And it's been, it's, been, it's been fun. Like, I think... Every every guest, I actually was able to share a moment with them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what I was looking forward to because it is about us coming together. Absolutely. I did it! I did it! Sorry. <laughs> it's about us coming together and, um, you know, just being our authentic selves. Because sometimes I feel like we sometimes will mask who we are, you know? Yeah. But I don't. I don't want. I want us to be able to let our hair down. Sometimes you don't always have to be a drill sergeant. Life is fucking short. Mm -hmm. okay. Twenty twenty two. I want to say for me, it it actually encouraged me to go through my friends list and start cleaning house, um, because there were so many different tragedies happening at that time. So I was like, I can't do this. I want to yeah. keep. Living. I want to keep enjoying myself. I'm still young as hell. Yeah. I still want to get turned. So, yeah. That's my message. So, I want to thank y'all all who's been rocking with me from the very first episode. All my guests who have joined, endured my silliness, my potty mouth, all of it. The guests who've cried. The, all, all of y'all who was a part of this, I do thank y'all. And I'm definitely looking forward to season two. Because it will be much, I want to say the highlight is I got to see where I can improve. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely yeah. looking forward to it. There's always, mm -hmm. always room for growth. Again, as I told you before, I'm super proud of you. You know, I tell you all the time, I'm super duper proud of you. Just super <laughs> duper. So like, you already know what you can do already. So imagine what's next. Man. Imagine what's next, baby. That's all yeah, I'm going to say on that. I can't wait because it's going to be good. <laughs> hey. good. Period. Let the people know where they can follow you, what you got going on, and all that good stuff. Hey, so I am on all social media streams at Coach K A Y W D S. Um, you can follow me on your favorite podcast platform at the Empowering Real Talk Podcast. I'm actually on YouTube as well. Follow your girl over there. I definitely would appreciate the support. A. Hey. I'm actually hosting a buy MBE day here in my city, uh, which is Minority Business Enterprises. Um, this is something, and I will tell y'all, if you are not certified in your business, please look into doing that because it is really important for us as business owners to get certified, baby. So, um, but yeah, I'm pretty much all over the internet. You can find me. Um, you can find my blog at UpgradedMindsets.life. You can shop the online store at UpgradedMindsets.shop. Mindsets is with a Z, baby. And <laughs> definitely follow me here on the gram at Coach K A Y W D S. I actually have two Instagram pages. I have Empowering Real Talk, which is my Reels page, and then I have Coach K Woods. Um, that actually is the Reels, and as well as other stuff that I post on there as well. So I'm pretty much all over. Yes, Christy, I'll follow you back, baby. Thank you so much. Yeah, just loving what I do, y'all. Um, empowering and inspiring, and you know, in Coach K Woods' way. So it's definitely a blessing. I'm honored, humbled. And unapologetic. 
All right. I don't know if you just saw, you know, I took a little nibble. While you hey, was that's that time. That time. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all, thank you. Y'all be safe. Please um, wash your hands, wear your mask, because they out here trying to vi virus us the fuck up, and I, I can't Man. take it. <laughs> yeah, you know that's a whole nother topic hey y'all make sure y'all follow because you know i gotta bring my girl to the empire and real talk podcast too so y'all stay tuned for that follow who oh me i'm sorry you. <laughs> oh yeah we don't go y'all because uh she didn't <laughs> y'all so much for yeah. tuning in i appreciate y'all love y'all have a good one. Oh wait i am gonna even though this is the season finale i am gonna be doing two um special episodes as the you know the seasons and the holiday is changing you know everybody's not good with coping so i'm going to do some special episodes that will kind of just bring light to people's lives during that time so we want to look out for that and um i got a workshop a virtual class yes september 24th um so make sure y'all register so y'all can get the zoom link get y'all journal get y'all pens because i'm going to be dropping some gems all right Very now <laughs> I love y'all. Please be safe. Have an awesome weekend. Practice some self care. Make you a priority, and that's that's it. Mic drop. Night, y'all. Bye, y'all.